Hello students, welcome to the experiment which deals with the Pelton wheel turbine. So Pelton wheel turbine is a impulse kind of turbine. So there is basically two kind of turbines are available. One is uh, impulse turbine and another is a reaction turbine. In the later we'll see why the Pelton turbine is called the impulse turbine. So this is a setup which is this kind of Pelton turbine will uh, Pelton turbine is mostly used in hydroelectric power plant. So this is the setup that is for hydroelectric power plant. Here the reservoir or the dam has not been shown here, but the the uh, line that connected the reservoir to the turbine is shown by the penstock. So penstock carries the water from the reservoir, and that water then strikes the wheel of the turbine. So what will happen? The what kind of energy conversion is taking place? Here is the pressure of energy. So that is the pressure of energy of the water has been converted into kinetic kinetic energy at the outlet of this nozzle. So we'll see the what are the uh, parts of the Pelton turbine. So we'll go through it. We'll see. So first important part of the Pelton turbine is the nozzle. So what the nozzle what is what is nozzle to nozzle converts the potential energy the pressure energy of the water and it converted to kinetic energy so whatever the energy has been before the the nozzle that all the pressure energy has been converted into kinetic energy so that's why it's called as a impulse turbine so wa all the water is coming from this nozzle then it will going to strike that wheel so that all the pressure energy there will be no uh, there is a co full conversion of pressure energy into kinetic energy that's why it is called impulse turbine and it also from the name ill pulse you can also say that it strikes the bucket with some impulse for impulsive force so from that uh, perspective also we can say that it's a, it's a kind of a impulse turbine so what happened so how do you then control the flow of the uh, uh, flow of the water or flow of the fluid for that we have to produce because if you need what is the purpose of this pelton wheel you can see here if you can see you can see that there is a shaft in the center of that pelton wheel so if pel this pelton turbine this is a shaft this shaft is directly connected to the generator so while this shaft is rotated this shaft is rotated because after the striking of the water to the wheel then wheel is rotates then it rotates the runner this is called the this portion is called the runner and then runner in the central position is a shaft so shaft is connected to the uh, generator then it runs the generator uh, runs the shaft of the generator so what will happen then because of this running of the shaft this all the mechanical energy then converted into electrical energy in the generator so ultimately we are gaining electricity so what is the purpose of this uh, turbine the turbine provides mechanical energy uh, uh, mechanical energy to the generator which in turn produce the electric electric energy that's uh, whatever the what energy is consumed what is the main uh, basic source of energy that is the energy that is possessed by the water this is the pressure energy possessed by the water then it is converted into kinetic energy at the outlet of the nozzle then it, ro it then it turns the wheel then it converted into rota rotational energy then the rotational energy in turn turns that shaft that shaft is the then produce mechanical energy then mechanical energy then converted into electrical energy through generator so there is a conversion of energy in every step so that is the nozzle and the how the flow has been controlled the flow has been controlled using this sphere so when the sphere is moving in so what will happen if the sphere is moving in the right direction what will happen the less amount of flow will be flow through the and less amount of fluid will be flow and that will be going to hit the very less amount of fluid is going to be hit the uh, wheel so we c we for what purpose we have what in what scenario we can use uh, we can turn this wheel and move the sphere inside when the power requirement is less so 
so that we have delete we have we have required less um, uh, less amount of power so the wheel velocity is reduced we want to reduce the wheel velocity but whenever we are required that the power requirement is high then we move the the spear move the spear in the right uh, left direction so it move the spinner then it's back and uh, and provides water to flow more and provides more water to flow and strike the uh, wheel then this is the runner so runner is the this one this is the runner and then after at the circumference of the runner these wheels are attached so if you can a runner consists of a circular disc on the periphery of which number of so number of buckets has been used so then then a then the belt on buckets these are connected to the runners so if you can see here that there is a splitter which divides the this belt on buckets are look like a uh, kind of spoon shaped buckets which are mounted on the circumference rim of the drive called the runner and this this spoon shaped buckets have to, uh, have been divided by the splitter and the splitter is divided the jets in the and deflected the water through 160 degree to 170 degree celsius 170 degree the, the uh, angle so these buckets are made of bronze cast iron stainless steel depending upon the head at the inlet of the turbine then the casing casing of the function of the water to because to splash out the water to to constrain the water to splashing out from the uh, this uh, uh, turbine arrangement to guide the discharge water to the trail race for that the casing the outer casing this is the casing this is the casing is required it's so outside of this to provide the water to flow to the tail race so so i will say the tail race is the after uh, after striking the water striking the wheel it will fall in this uh, in the below portion so that will be trail race and the whatever the ram or dam or reservoir we can we call it as a head race in case of hydroelectric power plant and when the water falls after the striking the wheel that will call it a tail race here it is called a tail stock or tail race so this is the you can see the see the setup so this is the dam so from dam it is connected through that pen stock there is a charge tank is is, is, uh, is provided in the pen stock and then it will go flows to the turbine then after the turbine this is a draft tube has been attached so from that draft tube this is a halogen cell draft tube and this draft tube is then uh, connected the turbine to the tail race so then we have seen a, uh, this is the whole setup for the hydroelectric power plant but we have only considered the how the pelton wheel or pelton turbine works so in the pelton turbine we have these uh, parts are available so what are the parts one is the important part is the nozzle which and along with the nozzle we have the spearhead and this spearhead controls the flu fluid flow then we have the runner at buckets and the, at the circumference of the bucket uh, in the runner we have got the buckets are attached then we have the casing to uh, to provide the flow to fluid uh, to provide the after striking the bucket we have to discharge the fluid to the tail race for that we have to uh, we have to provide the casing so that no more splashing of water has been to prevent some loss of water then another is important is the braking jet so when the nozzle is closed completely by moving the spear in the forward direction so how it flows if it this spear if you move the in forward direction what will happen no flow will be passed and no flow will going to strike the uh, uh, strike the wheel then will what happen still because of inertia the water because of inertia what will happen the wheel will still rotating so and it will be loss of if a loss of energy is there because that is rotational energy that is a loss of energy because we don't require any kind of power so for that we have to we have to break uh, we have to putting a break on that uh, of running of the rotating of that wheel so that we have provide a braking jet which is at the opposite of the nozzle 
so opposite of this nozzle we have put a braking jet and that is also provided by a nozzle so to solve the runner in a short time a small nozzle is provided which directs the water from the back of the bucket in case of here it is strikes the front of the bucket and to stop the bucket from running we have to provide the water we have to provide a jet in the back of the bucket and this water jet is known as a braking jet so at very uh, at very less time we can we have to stop the buckets because of to prevent the loss of efficiency so this is the term headrest i have already mentioned so what is the headrest is the reservoir that is the dam we have seen that is called a headrest then trailrest is a channel which is connected uh, after uh, like it's water out from the turbine casing after hitting the pelton bucket and this is the gross head is a vertical difference between the headrest and trailrest and this is the axial head is available at the inlet of the turbine to work is called the net head so f is the what will be the h of the h of will be the loss of head due to friction during transit of water from headrest to trailrest so this is the net head so cross head is the whatever the head it should be there uh, whatever the head the head is in terms of we can also write the pressure head this is so it's a pressure head because because of difference of headrest and trailrest and because of that because of this available headrest because of this av available head we have this pressure energy then is pressure energy is converted into kinetic energy but this head somehow has been lost because of friction and that friction we have to then take it into account then we got the net head so whatever the available head is available at the inlet of the turbine that is calculated using this uh, by this net head so these are the governing mechanism i have already discussed how the how the governing mechanism that is done by the the spear of the nozzle which governs the uh governs the water flow how much water flow will uh, will be required that will be if we move move the spear forward in the nozzle then it will be it will stop the, it will it will provide less amount of fluid to strike the wheel if you if the if the if you move the spear in the backward direction it will provide more water to flow the uh, water flow to strike the wheel then we'll get the maximum power output and the important and the next important was the number of buckets what will happen if you put number of buckets in the adequate order then we'll get the if uh, we'll get the the whatever the what will happen if the number of buckets are inadequate then there will be loss of water jet because what will happen the water jet coming out from the nozzle that will not going to strike the wheel if the water bucket is um, inadequate uh besides there also when a bucket comes in contact with other the next bucket may not get engaged with water jet so that is the problem when the buckets are more than required so there is a loss of water in both case if it is adequate there is a less number of bucket if there is more number of bucket what will happen so next bucket will not come in contact with the water jet so in both cases there will be drop of efficiency so by this uh, equation we can we can calculate the number of buckets required for the uh, the for for gaining the maximum efficiency so the that is a you can see here the pelton therapy gains mechanical energy purely due to change in kinetic energy of the jet not due to pressure energy change so which means pelton turbine is a pure impulse turbine and do we then we have to do power extraction so when the power extraction power extraction is you can have the equation like impulsive force f and the velocity of the wheel so how when the power extraction will be there if there is a velocity of the wheel is zero so that will be if the bucket is stationary kept stationary then we can have zero power output and what other way if the both the speed of the bucket and the uh, and the speed of the and the jet speed is same in that case what will happen impulsive force will be zero so th in that case also we will get zero power so we have to see that power extraction is zero when the speed of the bucket is zero when the bucket is still held stationary or the when the bucket speed is same as jet speed 
uh, these are and these are the some of the efficiency associated with the pelton wheel one you can say hydraulic efficiency so what do you mean by the hydraulic efficiency it is a power developed by the runner of a turbine to the power supplied at the inlet of the turbine so what is power supplied at the inlet of the turbine? that is the pressure energy that is the water power that is the kinetic energy that is provided you uh, supplied at the inlet of the turbine then this power supplied is hydrolytic so probable loss is between striking jet and very slightly rightly called hydrogen so there will be some loss so losses will be occur between the striking jet and the fan so that will give hydraulic efficiency then we have mechanical efficiency so it is the ratio of the power available at the shaft of the power developed by the runner of a turbine that the shaft i have already mentioned so that will be mechanical power and what with the runner power so how does the rotational energy of the runner and this is the mechanical energy of the safe power so that will give give to mechanical efficiency then the overall efficiency it will be like multiplication of both uh, mechanical efficiency and hydraulic efficiency will get okay so this is the theory of uh, this uh, pelton wheel so we're going to the demonstration of the experiment in the next video thank you